Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here and I am back again with another Creative Cow tutorial and in our ongoing look at learning Avid's Media Composer, what we're going to be doing in the next few lessons is we're going to take a look at how to create a video wall. Now in most cases I'd say we're going to create a video wall inside of Media Composer, but you know what, we're not only going to create a video wall inside of Media Composer, what we're going to do is we're going to wear multiple hats like I know that most editors always do. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to build a video wall inside of Avid's Media Composer. Then what I'm going to do is show you as an editor how you would set the same technique up to do inside of Adobe's After Effects. And then what I'm going to do since I am working on a Mac and I know a lot of former Final Cut Studio users out there still use Motion 5. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to do the same technique inside of Motion 5. But the catch is, is that Media Composer is always going to be our base or our starting point for creating these video walls. And I want to show you, like I said, wearing multiple hats, how you can get the same end result using Media Composer, Adobe's After Effects, and Motion 5. And what I'm going to do inside those compositing applications is we're going to push things a little bit further. I'm going to show you why sometimes it's beneficial to use a compositing application to create this type of effect. Okay, short introduction here. Let's just get into Media Composer and let's get started. Okay, so let's Command and Tab into Avid's Media Composer. And I know you're probably thinking to yourself, well, Kev, hold on, what's going on here? Normally you say, let's get into Symphony and let's get started, but now you're getting into Media Composer. Well, yes, that's right. As of version 7 of Media Composer, which is what I'm using right now, there is no such thing as Symphony anymore. Symphony is now an option for Media Composer. You'll see if I come over to Media Composer and I say About Media Composer, I am using version 7 and I do have the Symphony option. So we're just going to keep moving ahead with our lessons. I'm not going to be getting into details in a specific tutorial about what's new. If you want to find out what's new inside of Media Composer version 7, you can check it out at avid.com. We're just going to work the new features into our ongoing lessons so that it just seems like it's part of the workflow for, you know, for anyone new that's getting started with Media Composer, like I said, at version 7. Okay, so what we're going to do first is we're going to create a new sequence here. And I'm just going to come to my motocross footage. And what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to choose a shot that is 10 seconds long. I think I've got 10 seconds worth of stuff in here. I'm just going to punch in plus 10 seconds. And we'll just come back here. There we go. This is actually 11 seconds, a little bit too long. So let's make sure we're at 10. Perfect. I'm just going to hit B on the keyboard on both Mac and Windows. I'm going to select the sequences bin. I'm going to say OK. And let's set up our video wall. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit Command and 8 on the Mac Control and 8 for all my Windows friends out there. And I'm going to use the 3D Warp Effect. You can find that inside of Blend. Now you'll see right now I have the Avid Effects and Boris Continuum Complete 8 plugins installed because that does come when you purchase the Symphony option of uh, Avid's Media Composer 7. Of course, Avid Effects comes with just a standard version of Media Composer. So like I said, we're going to take the 3D Warp Effect. I'm simply going to take it, drag it, drop it down onto my clip. Now what's important to keep in mind when I step into Effects Mode, now you'll remember Effects mode on my uh, keyboard shortcut shift and Y. If you don't happen to have it mapped, you can always find it right over here at the top of your timeline. What's important to keep in mind inside the effects editor is that we can't have any point values. So for example, the size of the uh, b uh, box or the scale that I want to create here is actually 33 and a half. But because I don't have that option to get into uh, decimal places inside of the effects editor, we're just going to use 33%. I'm going to shrink it down to 33%. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to position this element in the upper left hand corner of the frame. Now what's important to keep in mind is that as soon as I do, of course, a keyframe is added. I don't want that keyframe. So what I'm going to do is just simply delete it. There we go. See you later. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to create two new layers of video by simply hitting Command and Y on the Mac, Control and Y for all my Windows friends out there. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to take this first layer here, we're going to select it and I'm going to copy it into the clipboard by simply hitting Option and C on the Mac, Alt and C for all my Windows friends. And we're just going to paste this into both the next two layers. Why would I do that? Well, now I have this effect on here and I basically have a clip in the upper left hand corner. So all I'm going to do here is I'm simply going to go to Video Layer 2, again step back into Effects Mode, and we're just going to reposition this clip right about there. I'm going to have a little bit of a gap between the clips and I'm okay with that. Of course, again, keep in mind a keyframe has been added. Again, exactly the same thing with the third layer of video. 
I'm just going to position it right over here. I'm just going to stick this on the edge of the frame. You see we got a little bit of a space there again. Remember, as always, delete that annoying added keyframe. So I'm simply just going to take uh, this middle element here. Let's come down to position and let's put the X value at zero here. I think that's a little bit better. So we got a little bit more of a space or maybe we'll just put this at minus one. I think that's looking pretty good. Okay, so what we need to do now is we need to take not just one layer, not just two layers, but all three of these layers. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold Option on the Mac, Alt on Windows again to copy these to the clipboard. And let's create three new layers of video. Again, we're simply going to patch into our three layers inside of our sequence. I'm going to hit B on the keyboard on both Mac and Windows. Now what's important to keep in mind, again, Shift and Y to step into effects mode, is we're simply just going to take these elements and we're just going to drag them straight down. Again, I'm going to leave a little bit of a gap that we can fix if we need to at the end here. Now, of course, again, what I should have done was I should have deleted those pesky keyframes. We'll do that in just a second here. That's looking pretty good. So, of course, again, pesky keyframe. Let's get rid of you. Pesky keyframe. Let's see. you still there in this one. Yep. Let's get rid of you. There we go. Do we have a pesky keyframe in the last one? Yes, we do. So let's get rid of all of those here. So we should have no keyframes in any of these layers. This video wall is really starting to come together. Okay, so again, three more layers of video. Command Y, Y, and Y. Control Y, Y, and Y for all my Windows friends out there. Again, exactly the same process. T on the keyboard. Option C to copy to the clipboard. Again, we're simply going to patch into those three layers. I'm going to hit B on the keyboard on both Mac and Windows. What we're going to do again, we're going to start right here with video layer 7, Shift and Y. Let's reposition this element right down here to the lower left corner. Now you can see we don't have as much of an even space here, but that's okay for the purpose of what we're doing. I could get in and get really specific with this if I wanted to, but I'm okay with it for right now. So again, I'm just going to reposition this layer here. We want to make sure we're viewing that layer. There we go. And last but certainly not least, we have this element over here. This is looking very, very nice. Now, of course, again, let's get rid of those pesky keyframes. But there is something going on here that I want to make sure that I get rid of. What I want to do is right now I'm happy with this video wall. If I wanted to, what I could do, simply hit Shift F2, which is my shortcut to render the effect. Now, if you don't have it mapped, remember, you can always find render effect right here at the top of your timeline. What I'm going to do is just render the topmost effect. You don't need to get in and render every layer. That's something that's very important to keep in mind. You'll see, very complex effect in HD only took six seconds to render. I can now come back and simply hit play if I want to. And there's all of those video clips playing back in my timeline. But like I said, what I want to do is I want to change things up a little bit. I want to have different clips playing in each one of the different windows. And what I want to do is I also want to have some times where things just go blank. So can we do that? Well, yes, we absolutely can. So what we're going to do is we're going to set up nine sequences. I know this might sound crazy, but once you see how simple this is to do, uh, trust me, you're going to be going back to this all the time. What we're going to do is inside of our sequences bin, we're just going to call this main video wall. Okay? So we have our main video wall. Now, I don't need these two audio tracks, so let's just delete those. I'm going to say OK. And what we're going to do, like I said, is I'm going to clear the monitor. I don't want that up in my monitor right now. And what we're going to do is we're going to take some motocross clips and we're going to create a sequence that's 10 seconds long. Now, why 10 seconds? Well, because we want it to fall perfectly into the 10 second duration that we've already made our video wall. Now, something else I want to point out, and that is that if this was an effect that you wanted to do all of the time, this is something that's actually very easy to set up. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to come back to the sequence for one second. Okay. What I can actually do is I can take each one of these effects and I can move them back into my sequences bin. And what I can do is I can call this upper left. We can take this one. We can call it, of course, upper center. This one we can call upper right. Now I'm not going to go through all of them. You kind of get how this is going to work. So now if I wanted to, what I could do, again, simply clear the monitor. What we're going to do is we're just going to take three clips here at random. I'll just take this clip 
and we'll edit it in, sequences. I'll take this clip, why not? We'll just mark an endpoint here, create a new video layer. Just edit it in, doesn't really matter duration, doesn't matter what clip, sure, why not this clip, okay? Again, Command and Y, Control and Y for all my Windows friends out there. Edit this in, well, guess what? I can now quickly create a video wall by simply dragging and dropping these effects onto these shots, just like such. Boom, 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 done. You see, really, it's the setup that takes a long time. It's not the actual, uh, you know, once you've got everything set up, it's not a matter of swapping shots out that takes a long time. That takes seconds. As long as you remember to take these effects, stick them into a bin. You could even call that bin effects. You could put it in your graphics bin. Just that you have it as a go-to all the time. Like, maybe this is going to be a look for your show. Guess what? Don't need to recreate it every time. Simply drag those effects out and have access to them at the snap of a finger. So what I'm going to do, just delete this clip and these effects here. Because like I said, what we want to do is we want to create some sequences to put into each one of these layers. Now again, let's just clear our monitor. And why don't we start with motocross footage. Now I'm not going to be too specific about the shots that I take. But what I do need to make sure of is that each one of them is two seconds long. And what we're going to do is we're just simply going to hit B on the keyboard five times. Okay? And what I'm also going to do is I'm just going to put some quick fades in here, just like this. Now, of course, again, I don't need the, don't need the audio there, so let's just actually hit dissolve instead of delete here. There we go. I think I'll make these uh, dissolves. Maybe we'll make them eight frames. Why not? And we're going to apply them to all transitions into out. Now, I do have an in and out point added in there. And you'll see that basically right now this just goes from same shot to same shot. So let's just change this up a little bit here, okay? I'm just going to take this to about here, sure, why not? I'm just going to remove the in point so that I can just drop this in. There we go, very cool. And we want, yeah, sure, why not? Why don't we have these guys going at night here? Again, mark that as my O point, hit B. So that way it comes in here, we got our guy flying in. Let's actually make sure that he does fly in here. That's kind of interesting. Oh, it's because I got an in point here. There we go. Let's remove that. Now we've got it the way we want. Perfect. Okay. And let's just grab a couple other shots here. Sure. Why not these guys here again? Remove in point. Drop that in there. Perfect. And one last one. Let's just grab. Sure. Why not? Grab the shot here. Again, we want it to be edited in, starting at the out point, working our way back. There we go. Boom. So we've now, if I play it, Got a pretty cool little sequence of shots. Very cool. Okay? And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to call this one. Okay? And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to close this bin. And what we're going to do is we're going to bring in some new footage. So let's bring in some new footage. We're going to call it boxing. Now I'm not going to import any clips. All we're going to do is simply AMA link to these clips. Let's actually make sure we don't select import. We're going to select AMA link, and we're already in our boxing footage, so I'm just going to select everything, and I'm simply going to say open. There's all the clips AMA link to in my project. All I'm going to do now is I'm going to duplicate number one, and we're going to call it appropriately enough number two. What we're going to do now is just simply take some boxing shots here. It doesn't even really matter which ones again, much like we've done before. We'll just grab a bunch of clips at random here. And you see how this process goes. Now we want to make sure that this shot here, this should be eight in the middle. There we go. I think we're going to have to go back and check this first sequence. Let's just double check this here. I'm just going to remove that and let's put a dissolve in here of 12. Actually, I think it was eight frames in the middle. Add. There we go. Okay, perfect. Okay, let's come back to sequence two. Again, exactly the same process. All we're doing just grabbing a bunch of random shots here. Got two more here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to choose one more here, just so you see how this goes. Okay? So let's duplicate this. Call it, of course, appropriately enough, number three. And let's just bring in some new clips here. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in, well, I don't even know what I'm going to bring in. Let's actually just AMA link to it. We'll figure that out as we go here. Here we go. Let's bring in some, let's bring in some time-lapse scenics. How does that sound? What we're going to do is just bring in just not everything, just a few clips here. We're just going to say open. There we go. 
And these are some really nice shots from Digital Juices Video Tracks HD. You can see we can do this actually very quickly. Now, of course, if you wanted to, what you could do is you could do the same process with nine different sequences. Like I said, I'm just doing this with a few of them here just so you get the idea. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to remove random elements here. And for this one, I'm going to remove this one. And maybe for number one, we'll even remove this fourth shot here. There we go. Okay, so we've got our video wall. We've got our sequences that have our clips that we're going to put into each one of the actual video panels. So I think this is a good place to pause. I don't want to overload you with too much in one tutorial because we've been going for you know quite a long time, almost 16 minutes talking about this. So what I think we're going to do is break this up. And in the next lesson, what we're going to do is we're going to get in, we're going to take all of those sequences, the three sequences we made, and we're going to drop them into each one of the video panels. And then we'll get in and we'll sort of spice things up at the end by just adding a title over top of everything else just so that you can see see how everything is going to work itself out in the end. So if you have any questions, you have any comments, or you have any tutorial requests, you can send them to Kevin P. McAuliffe at gmail.com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.